Thank you very much for joining us for another exciting edition of the Lunchtime Cafe on Kamnet TV. My name is Marco Kwakozi. This is a program that comes to you every Mondays, Wednesdays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. We come to you every day at uh, exactly 12 hours. We start with the midday news and of course, and then we follow it up with uh, our, our various segments that we have on this particular program. Now on the program today, we do uh, have quite a number of interesting items. We are going to be showing you some of the stories that we picked from the forgotten stories uh, basket uh, just to remind you of where we are coming from and also we are going to be looking at some stories that are making the headlines uh, that we expect to see in the our 19 hours menus we call that sec particular segment uh, emerging a stories a segment we are also later on expecting to host the um, UPND youths uh, just to come and talk to us about the uh, what they are doing and what they make of uh, 59 years of independence as Zambia said the Brits are 59 years of independence. So that's what is happening today on this particular program. Before we get into the details uh, of today's uh, program, let's uh, take a short break and when we come back, we'll be getting straight into the Forgotten Stories segment. celebrate but it has been really nice like to see the president to uh, to wave at everyone it's a great opportunity that has come to each and everyone so it has he has really um like enforced me to become somebody in life is the first independence under the united party for national development upnd <laughs> and president hagain de who previously shunned such events took the center stage Zambians turned up in numbers to witness the head of state as he graced the commemoration at the Freedom Statue in Lusaka. Young people had a message to the head of state President Hagai de Ichilema, who praised the occasion at the Freedom Statue. Independence to me means a lot because I've got my freedom, I use my light, I've got every light with, with the independence that I have. The independence that Zambia have means a lot to me and to my fellow youth around, around here. Uh, I can only want one thing, that is to be empowered by the new Don government and the Mr. President himself. You have to think about the youth. You have to empower us and take us to school. Yeah, as he promised, as he said in his manifesto that there'll be free education. Let him fulfill his promise, his manifesto as us giving, giving us free education. Let there be free education, let there be food. That is what I can say about the new Don government. I'm an upcoming artist whereby I would also like the president to empower us, the new uh, musicians, the upcoming artists, and also the, the feeling that I'm feeling right now is great because we've been celebrating here together with the president, nobody's hurt, everyone peaceful. That's what the independence should be. A free country, free speech. Right now I'm on TV, right? That is freedom because no one is able to kill me or hate me. That's the freedom that we need. The young people demand free education and empowerment opportunities in order for them to better their lives. Because uh, not all children come from uh, rich uh, families. Like um, to me, I don't come from a rich family. So I would uh, ask from the president that he should really empower us. Like he said, that he's going to empower our youths. So 
this goes to him that he should remember his promises that he made. Since we went to go and put a vote for him, he should also fulfill his promises as well. Uh, to us youths and uh, becoming employees to other companies. Well, the message from young people is clear. One only hopes the head of state will take into consideration their plea. Patrick Soko, Camnet News, in Lusaka. The president we lost, we lost are property. inside there. We lost People who have insulted the president are there. We can show you the pangas we suffered to make. No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. While it was a joyful day for many, Zambia's Independence Day celebrations were characterized with confusion for others as some officials from the United Party for National Development, UPND, were denied entry into State House. After witnessing the laying of wreaths at the Freedom Statue, officials and members of the public then proceeded to State House to witness the investiture ceremony where various people were being honored for their service to the country. However, confusion ensued when state house officials clearing people blocked some UPND councillors from going in. The councillors bemoaned poor treatment, alleging that they were being ignored after supporting and suffering for the party while in the opposition. This becomes the second time such an incident has occurred as named UPND members were allegedly blocked in a similar manner two weeks ago. Let's go. People who are insulting the we president lost, we lost are inside there. We lost People who have insulted the president are there. We can show you the pangas we suffered to make. No, no, no. 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 These guys do not have respect. How do they block councillors not to enter here? No, we are not going in. We are not going in. If this is going to be enough for them to suspend the councillors, let them do so. They will cause whatever they want to cause there. They have no space for councillors. Calm was later restored as the confusion attracted the attention of those inside State House and the councillors were granted entry. The Independence Day celebrations were attended by various officials, both local and representatives of international bodies. Ziporam Shala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. These are some of the candidates representing others who sat for the General Certificate of Education GCE 2022 examinations whose results have been withheld by the Examination Council of Zambia on allegation of examination malpractices. According to the Examination Council of Zambia, results for 63 schools across the country have been withheld and that until investigations into the matter are concluded, the results will not be released. However, some of the affected students Monday march at the Freedom Statue where the laying of the wreath for the commemoration of Zambia's 58th independence was being held with the hope of attracting the attention of the head of state president Hagainde Hichilema or they have pleaded with that he looks into their issue. This is my, my youth, I have exam 2022 GCE. I have a lot of people Please, I have a lot of Please. I have a lot of people who are in the college. So, I have a lot of people who are in the school. I have a lot of So, we are begging you, the father of a nation, please hear our cry. I traveled all the way from Chinga province. And uh, my sisters, they have traveled from Livingstone. Others, they have traveled from uh, different areas, the Copper Belt and some from Kabwe. So please try to hear us. We are here seeking for our results. Nothing else but results. With massive job opportunities such as those of the recruitment of Zambia Army officers, Zambia Correctional Warders and Wardresses, and the Zambia National Service, these candidates risk not applying for these opportunities because their grade 12 results are being held by ECZ. Uh, we need to apply in ZDNS uh, in other institutions, others are uh, nurses, 
they want to graduate but uh, they can't graduate without their results so please sir please sir hear our results as your children we don't know the the, the criteria which the is is we are using other schools receive their results but in other schools we didn't receive our we didn't receive our results we have come up with this uh, banner we are saying we need our results for 2022, which we start. There are employment, Aishile, Muchalo. Manje farmer results, yes, Unganabe, Katanish, Tuala, Mbashan, Tuala Station, a pray. Please, 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 our father of this nation, Barry, hear us. They say an opportunity comes once in life, and when it goes, it goes forever. These candidates risk losing out on opportunities that can transform their lives if the ECZ keeps on holding to their results. Their last hope is now for the president to intervene in their matter. Prudence Chota reporting for TV News. Thank you very much. So those are some of the stories that we thought we should remind you on. They did happen in the years 2021, 2020 and of course in 2022. So we just picked a few of them to just remind you of where we are coming from and what happened on the 24th of, of October on those particular days. Let's move on now. Let's get to look at what is happening currently and what we expect to see in our main news this evening. Uh, we do have quite a number of stories. But we're going to pick just a few uh, just to give you a heads up on what you expect to see in the 19 hours bulletin. Now, this particular segment is called the Imaging Stories segment. But before we get into it, let's take a short break. Thank you very much. You are still watching the Lunchtime Cafe on Camnet uh, TV. Uh, this is a program that comes to you every day at 12 hours. And uh, we do uh, give you quite a number of uh, interesting items as regards news. And also we do look at sports and we do have interviews on this particular program uh, just to inform you or put you up to date with this, what is happening as regards current affairs in this beautiful country. Now let's quickly get to look at the emerging stories. Uh, we start with uh, the Transparency International Zambia, which says uh, this year's Independence Day is yet another opportunity for the country to reflect on the progress. Uh, it has made in different aspects uh, over the past 59 years and uh, to reinvigorate uh, the resolve uh, to uphold the principles that underpin a just and prosperous society uh, that gives equal opportunities to all the citizens. Now the TIZ Executive Director Maurice Onyambe says this day is not just the commemoration of a historical struggle uh, for self-determination but a vivid reminder of the continued commitment as a country to achieving true democracy and good governance premised on a relentless fight against corruption. Let's have a look at this. As I said, uh, we join the rest of the country in commemorating uh, this year's uh, Independence Day, uh, which is yet another opportunity for us as a country to reflect on the progress that we have made uh, in many different uh, respects uh, over the last uh, 59 years. Um, but beyond that, that, I think that uh, it also gives us an opportunity to reinvigorate our resolve uh, to you know, uphold the principles that underpin uh, a just and prosperous society that uh, you know gives equal opportunities uh, to all uh, in terms of uh, the different opportunities that exist uh, within uh, within the country. Um, as Tia is a, it is our firm belief that uh, an unwavering resolve, uh, you know, to fight uh, the scourge of corruption in real and meaningful ways uh, is a prerequisite to a thriving democracy uh, and the attainment of a truly free and a prosperous Zambia. So we would like to, you know, give this challenge to uh, the current administration, but also to our political leaders uh, from across uh, the political divide that uh, you know let them remain alive to the ideals of our forefathers 
uh, the ideals, uh, you know, that sought, um, you know, to advance a Zambia uh, that is free of corruption, uh, a Zambia that, uh, you know, fosters a level playing field for all its citizens, regardless of uh, whatever political or other affiliations that they may have. And I think that um, the onus is on our current group of leaders, but also on each and every one of us. Thank you very much. We do expect to see that particular story at uh, 19.30 this evening uh, during our main news uh, bulletin. Now let's move on. Uh, Permanent Secretary, Gender Division in the Office of the President, Ms. Mainga Kabika, is impressed with uh, the way Germany has structured its gender machinery right up to the grassroots level. Now she said this in Berlin. Germany at the end of the one week engagement uh, by the delegation of women that was in Germany for engagements focusing on women political participation. She noted that Germany gender structure was heavy at grassroots level and that Zambia's vision was to get to such levels. Now Ms. Kavika observes that in Germany the position of women in leadership are more than what they have in what we have in Zambia as women parliamentarians in Zambia stand at 15% and approximately 10% at local government level while Germany it is approximately 34% of women in parliament. Let's have a look at this. I've had a lot of takeaways from here. Our exchange tour was really beneficial. Um, very impressed with the way um, Germany has structured this gender machinery and the way they have mainstreamed right up to the grassroots level. Uh, their structure is very heavy at uh, grassroots level and uh, we are hoping that we're also going to get there because this is our vision. We'd actually like to ensure that we get closer to the people and ensure that we provide the service at that level. So we are looking forward to ensure that we also speak to the decentralization so that we're not only um, heavy at the national level, but uh, we should go closer to, to the people. Uh, here, um, the uh, positions of women in leadership are much uh, more than uh, we have in Zambia, because in Zambia we only have 15.4% uh, of women in parliament and uh, approximately 10% of women at local uh, government leadership. But uh, here they are approximately 34% uh, in parliament and uh, those are the numbers we are looking forward to, to get to. Uh, we are hoping to have the quotas and uh, I would also like to take uh, advantage of this opportunity to encourage all political parties to embed the quotas in their constitution so that uh, they ensure that they have, uh, they receive 30% uh, of um, uh, the positions in, in, in the uh, parties for women. Um, this is what we want to get to as a nation as well, so that at the national level uh, we have a 30% minimum at uh, um, be it at a cabinet level and uh, be it at a parliamentary level, uh, local government leadership, as well as uh, um, uh, government institutions, and also uh, this should be spread to the to the private sector as well. That's about uh, women and uh, uh, representation at leadership level uh, in Zambia. We did have a delegation of um, uh, women that went to Germany uh, to go and see how uh, women are participating in positions of uh, leadership. Now, moving on, uh, the next story says the Zambia Land Alliance, ZLA, has joined the rest of the country in commemorating 50 years, 59 years of uh, independence. Now, Zambia Land Alliance Executive Director Patrick Musole was however quick uh, to note that his organization is saddened uh, that the majority of Zambians are not yet economically independent. Mr. Musode says it is sad that most Zambians do not have secure access, ownership and control of overland and associated natural resources. He says 59 years after independence, Zambia has continued with imperialist laws that deprive Zambians uh, the right to natural resources like minerals. Mr. Musole says the law that restricts citizens uh, to surface rights 
only was imposed on the, on the forefathers by colonial imperialists uh, to rob them of their Im mineral rights. Zambia Land Alliance joins the rest of the country to commemorate 59 years of independence. We celebrate the political gains and democracy the country has achieved over the years. However, on the economic front, ZLA is saddened that the majority of Zambians are not yet economically independent. One of the factors of production and basis of wealth creation is land, and yet the majority of Zambians do not have secured access, ownership and control over land and associated natural resources. 59 years after independence, Zambia has continued with imperialist laws that deprive Zambians the right to natural resources like minerals. For example, the law that restricts citizens to surface rights only was imposed on our forefathers by colonial imperialists to rob them of their mineral resources. And yet we have continued with such laws all these years after independence. ZLA is therefore calling upon the government of the Republic of Zambia to amend all land-related laws to empower Zambians with land and associated natural resources. Independence is not about singing songs and giving speeches. The citizens of an independent Zambia should own the land and associated natural resources and use them to create wealth for themselves, their children, and their children's children. ZLA is calling upon the government to undertake people-centered land reforms for Zambians to actualize and enjoy the full benefits of their independence. We cannot talk about independence when Zambians are not able to enjoy an impeded access, ownership and control over their land. God bless Mother Zambia. coverage of any breaking or latest news in Zambia and around the world on Kamnet television call the numbers on your screen Kamnet television bringing to your screens fair news impartial news credible and reliable news all the time get the whole truth on Comnet World News. Comnet Television, not just another channel. Thank you very much. You are still watching the Lunch Cafe on Camnet TV and as we did promise earlier that we are going to be having an interview and we are going to be talking to uh, Mr. Trevor Mwinde who is the Deputy National Youth uh, Chairperson uh, Mobilization uh, in the ruling United Party for National Development. Mr. Mwinde is here with us uh, this afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, on uh, the Lunch Cafe. Welcome to this interview. I'm uh, glad to be here and uh, glad also to be hosted by you, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful to God Almighty. Okay. Now, today, Zambia celebrates 59 years of independence. Um, why should we, as Zambians, uh, celebrate this particular day? Well, uh, if uh, you, uh, as a citizen of this country, are to evaluate uh, this year's independence theme, where they're saying uh, accelerating uh, national development through equitable resource distribution. Uh, we have had uh, a lot of turbulent uh, moments and times in our country where everything was politicized. Mm -hmm. But as uh, we sit and stand and walk and talk, 
we have come to realize that uh, the country is older than all of us, hence the need for us to be uh, honest, humble, and be in the position to deliver to the expectations of many Zambians. Mm -hmm. There's peace in the country and uh, economic uh, affairs and uh, inequalities are being addressed. There was a time in February 2020, those that have Google can Google. And those that rely on social media can do. In 2020, uh, when a bag of milimi was 280, so we have beaten the records of the country even backwards. Moving forward, we are moving with our head high because we are fulfilling what we promised the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. uh, many Zambian people are going to go also go into the private sector of farming because the government has also provided uh, space for funding to anybody who wants to go in farming for 10,000 kwacha per hectare. Well above that. Uh, that. That bracket also encompasses all of you, including private businessmen, the media, uh, the people in the civil service and all, mm -hmm. you are entitled to such a facility. Mm -hmm. Believe you me, uh, we're on the right trajectory. The Chingora Chirilabombwe road, that which was a historically a very bad road, if you were to recall. Now the new donor administration says, no, look, let's have it sorted out. And then we also have uh, uh, the Katete Chanida road, the Minister of Infrastructure some few weeks ago was spotted in the area where he gave assurances to the citizens. And that road, it's important to say that uh, the Chidirabombo Chingora road was worked on by our people, the Zambian people, my brother. They have got uh, good, we have good engineers in this country. We've got equipment and we also have a good relationship with any other external investors. So that having been the case in point, there's more reason as to why we can rise to the occasion and build our country in unity and love. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are some sections of society, um, should I say the opposition uh, political leaders are saying it's not worth celebrating uh, independence, um, uh, especially for the young people, uh, uh, as, as, as there is so much social and economic challenges uh, that the country is going through. Well, everybody is uh, uh, able to believe and uh, live by the standards of what they believe in. Mm -hmm. And uh, except uh, there are certain behavior characteristics that which are also very contagious. And uh, they have got capac capability to also affect our coexistence. The opposition must realize that uh, the country this day today, 24th of October, is uh, 59 years old. Mm -hmm. Most of these politicians that we have in the opposition or in the ruling, uh, they are average aged, and uh, meaning that the country is older than them. Mm -hmm. So there is more reason as to why we must be able to evaluate and be in the position to uh, make proper comparisons. This is an appeal to the citizens, an appeal and a request, and a very serious request that, look, dear Zambian citizens, let's take politicians for what they say. Uh, we have had a lot of cheap talk. When the maize, the mirror meal price was higher, the opposition said uh, we, we suspect that uh, uh, this maize is uh, genetically modified, mm. uh, uh, so it is not uh, fit for human consumption. And uh, when the medieval price was higher, they could not say that. But how can a Zambian farmer in Petauke, in Katete, in Pika, in Luwingo, in Kasama, in Choma, in Zambezi, Chavuma, Kabompo, Manyinga, Mwenilunga, Lusaka, Kapiri, eh, Choma inclusive also and Kalomo. How can a Zambian farmer produce GMO? And uh, it's uh, 
a direct insult uh, to the farmers by the opposition people who say farmers can grow GMO maize and bring to food reserve agency. Mm -hmm. Because government is uh, producing a minimum from the maize that which is locally grown and those are what we call homegrown solutions. Mm. And as if that was not enough, they now come further and say, no, we are enriching uh, ShopRite, uh, which is a foreign uh, investment in our land. <clears throat> the biggest question that which begs an answer in this uh, scenario is, is, uh, is it indeed genuinely true that the government uh, is uh, uh, through Zambia National Services engaged in a business with uh, uh, ShopRite? The, que the answer is no. From 1993 when ShopRite came into this country, uh, we have had national milling uh, put ShopRite as their major distributor of their mini meal, rice, uh, and uh, flour commodities. So there is a degree of hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we are not ready to go into dramatic uh, hands and dramatic expre expressions, explain matters on the basis of uh, uh, what is genuinely true. Uh, we are not willing to experiment or try to play around with the truth or try to do uh, uh, theater uh, kind of arrangements. There's no stage management, there's no amount of drama, there's no amount of political propaganda that which is going to work against uh, our unity and our resolve to do what is good for the Zambian people. Mm -hmm. 59 years is a long way to go even for me. I'm grateful to God I'm alive, but I'm hoping and believing that at a certain time, I will still sit and look in your eyes, Mr. Makokwa Kozi, and say, no, now I'm 50, 59, mm. my brother, yes. Mm. So we are grateful to great men that lived before us, starting with uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda and uh, all other people that uh, they worked with. We may not be able to mention them name by name, but there are many people that uh, contributed uh, enormously to the growth and development of our country, Zambia. Mm -hmm. So we're very grateful. Mm. Yes. The, the argument still remains uh, to say uh, that the cost of living still remains high as people are celebrating independence. And this is the argument, um, the opposition. They're saying, what is there to celebrate with the uh, high cost of, of living? Uh, when you see the cost of fuel, uh, when you see the cost of mini meal, when you see uh, the cost of essential commodities, um, they're saying there's nothing really to celebrate about it. Well, uh, people may want to uh, play politics at each and every given uh, moment, mm -hmm. but we must be able to be reminded that Chishimba uh, Kambuiri when he was an alliance uh, member of the UPND in 2020 in January, he held a press briefing. And in that press briefing, he addressed the issue of uh, food security by stating that uh, the minimum prices at that time, the prevailing minimum prices were not very conducive and helpful to a common Zambian. So that being the case, uh, I do believe that uh, at that time a bag of merimi was about 280 kwach in areas that which are like Lusaka, Kawe, along the railway line. Of the railway line, as far as Kabompo, where I was at that particular time, you would buy a bag of merimi of 320, 350 in Chinyama's shop, CRS. People can go and uh, do their due diligence by finding out if that, what I'm saying is the truth. In PF days, minimum was an imaginably very high and expensive. As if that was not enough, we had no space also to communicate, love one another, associate, and live in harmony with one another. Mm -hmm. So all that having been said, I do believe that uh, uh, it is all propaganda, cheap, corrosive politics, that which are not health for the development of any nation. And uh, you know when people uh, are lacking a genuine cause as to how they can solidify their campaigns, they tend to vacillate from one theory to the other. So as UPND, we are candid people and we will not be able 
to mince the truth or mix it with anything. We are not in, in a rush, but we are desperately willing to do just and fair that which the Zambians voted for. I know you have referred to it as cheap and corrosive politics, but what do you make of such kind of politics? Uh, how does it help uh, the Zambian people or the country uh, uh, in terms of developing? You see, uh, checks and balances are a prerequisite of a health environment. Even in scientific terms, we have the real samples and the placebos being administered to patients in given uh, experiment, experiments and researches. So going forward, as a citizens, I think we, we respect and value the opposition. And we know that uh, there is no party that which came to live forever in the leadership of any given country. But we are looking forward to the Zambian people to entrust His Excellency Hagaende Jerema uh, with uh, more years to govern this country so that uh, his vision and mission that which he has for the country and the citizens of this good country, Zambia, our motherland, uh, must benefit uh, from his inclusive agenda, from his hard-working spirit, from the, his appeal for a critical mindset. Uh, gone are the days when uh, people used to be uh, given money as they feed their own chickens, that which they keep, mm -hmm. hybrid chickens, that which they keep. Gone are the days uh, people need to be given uh, things to do and the UPND's commitment, if you have seen it, and its dedication and devotion is to making sure that uh, uh, men and women, youths are taken care of, retirees are paid on time, uh, recruitments, impartial recruitments that which are ongoing around the country, not those nepotist kind of approaches favoritism at prey and uh, uh, ethnocentrism at prey in workplaces. I'm still surprised, however, that uh, in our country, uh, in our age, at our time, we still have people that still want to uh, refer to a person's capability to execute a certain duty on the basis of where he comes from. Mm. Uh, it's no longer exciting, it's not impressive, and it's not uh, anything that we would want to adapt to. Our generation is a cocktail of uh, uh, combinations and hybrids of uh, mixtures and intermarriages. So for those of an uh, oct octogenarian age that which wants to believe that they can influence and infuse confusion, we are sorry to say that. The country uh, is uh, graduating next year to become 60 years and we will not be in the position to retard falter or retreat or go back and start to consider other unethical or orthodox ways of living. We are way, way willing and able to adapt to the current uh, scenario where in a country tribe doesn't matter, area doesn't matter, but what matters is your uh, competence and citizenship and your willingness to be part and parcel of the team that which will deliver. And for now, we are grateful to the new Dawn administration and uh, the circle of their partners, both locally and outside. Uh, the, their willingness to be transparent and accountable to many may, not, may be misunderstood. And to those that are shunning, like the opposition that may say, will not be able to come for Independence Day celebration. It's just their culture. They take things too like a dice call. There are people that want to take things too much cheap and in a jovial mood. Uh, what would they be doing uh, if they're not coming to celebrate in unity and uh, uh, in the company of many other compatriots? And uh, they also call most of them that uh, they are patriots. So how can you be a patriot if you're not able to or evaluate and associate yourself with national events. We want to say thank you to the former vice presidents. We have seen them there at State House. Uh, we also want to say thank you 
to the invited uh, guest of honor this year. I believe he's a president from uh, Tanzania. Tanzania. I want to say thank you for being part and parcel of the team that which wants to work to the best of their ability for the people of Zambia. Mm -hmm. uh, the opposition, uh, they beat us, they raped women, they assaulted women. We still have people uh, on the copper belt. I know of a girl called Linda Samawemu who was raped, beaten, and she still has a very big brain surgery that which she goes for review out of the country every now and then. So that being the case, it's history, it's water, but the wounds that which the, the opposition now, the just opposition has left on the, uh, on the bodies and in the mindsets of many Zambians and the other observers and monitors outside beyond our borders are too live and vivid to be ignored. So nobody can take them so seriously. Look. The service industry is operating, people that are saving food, they are operating because we have seen leadership. They used to cross down almost bringing the country to a standstill out of compulsory attitude. Other than that, they, they forced themselves, they are frags in terms of their party regalia. They were ever flying from 1 January to 31st December to infuse in the mindsets by forcing people to think that they were still popular on the ground. But look, we don't have Chitenge materials that are flying at town center. We don't have Chitenge materials that are flying at uh, intercity. We don't have Chitenge materials that are flying at Soweto. We are so much tolerant, and being tolerant must not be misunderstood or mistaken for being weak. So to those that are in the opposition that still think and believe that uh, they can uh, disturb or cause confusion in this country, Zambians now are more interested to define themselves and compete fairly in this enabling business environment which has been built by the new donor administration rather than the politics of individualistic approach or a kingdom style where if you are a president you initiate your daughter, your son to become a member of parliament, then you push them to become a president sometime in the future. Look, this country has got the power and the ability to choose its own leaders. There's no way that we are going to also allow that kind of narrative. We are also here to build uh, the confidence and uh, to also build uh, the resolve to make sure that this country can be governed in a better way rather than in a family style. What are you doing then as, as a youth leader to make sure that 59 years of independence, after 59 years of independence, um, people, especially the youths, uh, practice politics of civility? We have been on the spot and we want to say thank you to you people in the media fraternity. You have also been able to bring us up to speed in terms of what we needed to do and what we needed to genuinely uh, uh, not to do. You have been our mentors, you have been our guide and our compass, our moral compass in most occasions as politicians sometimes may slip off, but you have been there for us and you have been there with us. Uh, we as youth leaders, our duty and our role is to make sure that we make recommendations, advise and adjust the expectations where necessary. Mm -hmm. and where possible and be also enablers and advocates in, in times and seasons where people are unable to come to a common understanding. We have resolved a lot of uh, miscommunicated messages and we have also energized our people who have been there as counsellors, uh, for social counsellors, uh, we have also bridged the gap between the leadership of the people on the grassroots and the people in government. Uh, in all in all, we cannot say we've been doing this on our own. That's why I appreciated you, the people from the media. I also thank the church leaders, including Pastor Chiloba himself from uh, uh, Healing uh, Ministries. Uh, he has, at certain times when he has heard a message that which is not uh, moving in, in tandem with what is expected on the ground, he has called, say, oh no, Mr. Winde, I hear this, 
uh, is it you and what can we do about it? Look, the country is larger than all of us. And uh, soon or later, either out of design or out of, out of fashion or beyond whatever technology, we will leave it. And uh, we must leave it as a better press than we found it. And His Excellency Agenda Ijelema has demonstrated that by not even just running for money. He has come with clean hands to the leadership of the country. He says, no, look, I am not even willing to take a single penny as a salary or allowance. Let's work towards rebuilding and having a better Zambia for all, mm -hmm. genuinely. So as a youth leader, we're doing quite a lot. We're not saying what we've done is enough already. We are willing to go an extra mile. Uh, if, if you feel and if uh, still youths uh, feel that uh, what we're doing isn't enough, or maybe there's an area that which we have neglected, we are open to advice and we want to grow at each and every day in making sure that we leave nobody in the crusade of growing a Zambia we want. And the Zambia we want, at 59 today, uh, I come here as a person fully aware that I must be humble. The country is older than me. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we managed to attain political independence as a country. And the general perception out there is that um, the country is not economically independent. Uh, I, I say this with um, the huge debt uh, in mind. Uh, what do you make of um, this statement? You see, even when you go to a hospital, uh, I want the media to take note of that. Even when somebody goes to the hospital, uh, the doctor would ask you, oh, you have diarrhea, you have been having this problem for how many days? Mm -hmm. Any problem has got its own genesis. The problem we have as a country now is due to past poor leadership. Not all. Yes, not all leaders were bad. Uh, we had at a certain time in the leadership of the country missed the genuine agenda and the purpose of why we needed to have leaders. So we have other countries that do not produce any mineral but their GDP, their economic status and outlook is way beyond uh, admiration. So as far as we are concerned, uh, there's somewhere where we messed up. And the moment we start to stop resisting facts and the reality that as people, there's somewhere where we, we messed up, uh, then the better. Mm -hmm. Even in a church organization, church environment, even in a domestic environment, the moment one wants to acknowledge that, oh, yes, yeah, I was wrong, the moment one fails to be submissive to the other, where you antagonize in an antagonistic environment, uh, there is no room or space for growth or change of direction. Mm -hmm. So what I want to say is that uh, at a certain time, the country... Uh, had a debt of about one billion kwacha. Yes, and uh, uh, 10 years later, due to uh, certain misplaced priorities, purposes, and pursuits, uh, we did uh, see a trend that the borrowing went beyond. And in that borrowing, it actually was meant to develop the infrastructure sector. Then when you go on Zambia National Broadcasting Corporation, you tell people to say, no, uh, there is development in terms of infrastructure. People will tell you that, uh, no, the infrastructure is meant probably for you people in town. You have seen it. For us, we haven't seen what you are talking about. Not until now when CDF has knocked on our door. We have seen a one by three classroom. Uh, we have seen a boho, we have seen a CDF vehicle, uh, which we haven't seen in a, in a lot of years. So the borrowing uh, trend uh, left our country at a very bad and sorry site, where it even went to about uh, 32 billion. And uh, that was, uh, at that time, it was even more than what the country could budget for. We became the first country. This is where the problem is. Some people may not feel very well to talk about it. Because look, even in church, before you join, you must acknowledge that you need help. You need the spiritual, uh, spiritual reformation and reconciliation to yourself 
all the four or three patterns of a human being, spiritual, physical, and uh, social, needs to be reconciled. So when somebody is fearing, and when somebody is resisting, uh, they may be possessed. So as a country, we were already proclaimed as a Christian nation, may God still continue looking after the good son of the soil, former President Chiloba, uh, who declared this country as a Christian nation. So that being the case, we must acknowledge that there were mistakes which were done, and these mistakes are being corrected now. And the correction of a situation or a problem is not a massage. It's a painful process that which others had to pay, unfortunately. And the people that are paying are less the poor people. It's not the people that are uh, affluent or people that are richer. Uh, when we just meant to adjust certain things like fuel, the same affluent people would rise to the occasion and start saying, ah, no, fuel ya dura maningi, this has to also become expensive. Uh, and yet they know and are aware. The same affluent people, they read, they write, and listen to a lot of news channels. About 31 oil producing countries, the OPEC, they sat down and said, we must limit the production of the product and making sure that we prioritize a green energy and the other we try and also increase uh, the viability of other energy sources in order to reduce the global warming effects and the pollutants of the air. The same learned people, they go and start condemning here Muntu, oh chicho, sa, oh rima, kaboti chino chaka, sa nizarima, oh nizarima ko hafu, but what it means to me, a person who is expecting from uja oh rima, or uja wame na mashoka milisi parodi, kome na maendo oda, Muza kuta chino chaka, tizari mako chabe pangono because ita wana mawe wame tifuna wachita vinango. It means that if the source is limited, then even you wotenga. Kai muzambo gaba na iwe upaseko, upaseko wana wake murimi, na iwe utenge wendo kaguli seko market. So there is some slight limitation. Zambia is not yet a country that which is self-dependent in terms of our production. So that being the case, certain sectors of our people must acknowledge that, live with it, and accept it. Mm -hmm. And when they accept it, then we can also become versatile, dynamic, and decide which path do we do. Do we start branding our fuel with ethanol or in order to reduce the cost to have more production? Do we have to have more reserves? or? which other avenues people are busy complaining as in the opposition but they have never offered any alternative solution so it means a person who keeps on complaining complaining is even worse than a football supporter because a football supporter will be able to voice out to the court to say no we are number nine muweshe nesa chaye ko midfield because a football supporter will tell you that that one is less than my offside so there is no change of form formation on the ground in terms of political mindset and maturity which we appeal as a young politician because our generation now dicta its dictates and demands are that there is no space for experimentation experimentation and there's no space for making mistakes uh, and uh, the anxieties and expectations of the people are well 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 known so we must deliver to the expectations with precision. What should the young people do uh, to contribute uh, to the country's drive uh, to attain economic independence, considering the various uh, empowerment schemes that are available in the country now? Well, we, our appeal is that uh, we are thankful, uh, thank you for that question. We attentively listen to the national budget, and when the national budget was being laid, we we are shown that there is an increase on the funding and the Citizenship Empowerment Commission. Mm. And uh, we do believe and have a lot of confidence in the people that are managing the Citizenship Empowerment Commission because those professionals will be able to prevail in a very impartial manner to provide service, good services to all the Zambians 
irregardless of their political affiliations. So we want to age as a youth leader. I want to uh, uh, call on board most of the youth that are having challenges with such an entity and uh, to encourage them that CEC is not the only option. There, is, there are also grants and loans under CDF. Grants and loans are not family money that which must be experimented due to the difference between the DC and the member of parliament or council chairman, council chairman to try and marshal their muscles. No. Uh, the good intentions for that money is to alleviate poverty. And that's the reason why our government, the New Dawn administration, through the able leadership of His Excellency Saga in the Ijilema, did decide to bring about decentralization. So decentralization has come here to stay in order to respond to different dynamics and different economic dictates and demands across the country. So I urge the youths to come on board. There is no need for these youths that are applying for CEC to be apologetic. If you know, you know. And they just also need to also maintain decorum. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you don't know, uh, feel free also to expose your limited capacity to understand certain matters so that other people may also be in the position to help and facilitate. We are also, all of us are desperate to grow. And uh, we want to grow within this space that which has been created. And we cannot grow in an environment of confusion. So we must respect the office holders, but in that respect, we also expect a symbiotic and a mutual kind of response because it, respect is end. It cannot be uh, one way. So by and large, uh, we are aware that there are many fronts through which government has been trying uh, to make sure that uh, the burdens of the shoulders of the youths is reduced. Recently we s did see the demise of a former um, Speaker of the National Assembly, Musa Mwanamambwa, and also former Minister of Finance, Nganduma Gande, who was at the helm when Zambia attained the hippic completion point, and also a governance activist, uh, uh, Andrew Ntewewe, who was critical of the UPND, uh, especially towards the 2021 general election. Uh, what do you make of um, uh, the death of these three and what do you think has been their contribution to the well-being of the country? Well, uh, I have uh, known and uh, monitored the works of uh, Honorable Nandu Peter Magande very closely and uh, I have known and monitored the operations of former Speaker of National Assembly, uh, uh, Mr. Amusa Mwanamuambwa. These two people, uh, this, the country has been uh, robbed of uh, true garant soldiers, sons of the soil, who meant so well and gave it all to the service of their country. Uh, my sympathies and uh, heartfelt condolences indeed on my own behalf and on behalf of the institution UPND Youth Folk. I want to say we are sorry for the passing on of the two grand soldiers, namely Mr. Nandu Peter Bagande and uh, Mr. Amusa Mwanamwambwa, these sons of the soil gave it out to the best of their ability to deliver service, an impeccable level of service delivery to this country, Zambia. Uh, their works shall forever be penned down and they shall move side by side with the history of the country. I'll tell you that uh, when I started uh, watching Parliament TV, I saw the humility in terms of discharge of his functions. I've not seen one within my time. I've not seen one, uh, such a man who was so humble at what he was doing. 
Amosa Mwana Mwamba, we shall miss you. And uh, Dr. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Ngandu Peter Magande, we also miss you. Then when it comes to Mr. Andrew Ntewewe, he was an activist. For me, a person who is an activist and a person who, as long as he had also a stand and uh, a, a role he played in our society, I'm not, I'm not God to grade him. We will also miss Mr. Ntewewe. And uh, he was still youthful, young and energetic. Sorry for his loss. We also convey our heartfelt condolences as a party and uh, as an individual, Trevor Mwinde. Uh, we say, may God console, comfort all the three families that are in mourning because their lives really had uh, an implication or had uh, affected a lot of other families across the country in a positive way. Over the weekend, we did see um, the biggest, um, uh, one of the biggest, if not the biggest, opposition political party in Patriotic Front uh, suspending uh, some of its senior members. Um, what do you make of this? First of all, uh, what happens in a political party like Patriotic Front is their own business. Uh, what happens in uh, a political party, SPF, is their own business. But in Ibemba, there is a saying which says that no ashari ko wakabamo. So there is no way that which we can uh, completely ignore the affairs and the happenings in the largest opposition political party, most especially that they were once in leadership of the country and now also they are championing a comeback. A cutout from the same happenings is that uh, uh, the team that which was suspended, Zambians must know. Uh, that particular team which was suspended is a team that which is very sincere and open, showing the Zambian people that leadership is distributed equally across the country. And they are saying, Eddie Galungu cannot be a president of Zambia again. And their differences on that premise has made sure that these others are suspended. Okay, even when they are suspended, uh, we want also to believe that even those that are saying Eddie Galungu should come back, they are just trying to prey on the minds of the presidential hopefuls that they have. So they are making no any other person to become a fool. They want Zambians to still start doing the guesswork for them. Mm -hmm. Zambians are no longer interested to, to do fill in the blank or to do kind of like a crossword puzzle uh, for a politician. A politician must assure Zambians instead that they are stable mentally and as an organization, as an entity, they are also capable to discharge their functions in a united way and also show true and real cause that they are also able to hold their institution or their political party in times of hardships and in times of happiness together. Why adopt a person and then you suspend him along the way? Well, even us as UPND, some time back, we did uh, uh, suspend our member of parliament for Mwandi and we also suspended our member of parliament for Shesheke for not being loyal. But I think the differences that which uh, they have, uh, they have a lot uh, to do with their culture and their behavior signature as a political party. So as an individual, I don't flourish in confusion. So if I'm to speak in line with what the spokesperson of the party UPND and in line with what uh, the chief government spokesperson spoke about, if I'm to make reference with what Honorable Cornelius Mwetwa did mention, 
it's a very unfortunate and it uh, casts a, a very big uh, shadow of doubt on the people that follow the the development the developments in the political organization of that political entity if you were to if you were to watch football a team that which will win is also observed based on ball possession and also attempts on target uh, so what they are doing uh, keeps them off the target because us uh, if we are to become chances and the political hooligans will be able to say oh one same way whatever the fire mpf is saying but we are doing very health competitive uh, politics based on service delivery to the zambian people and the zambian people are going to tell particular members of parliament that are to refer to the ruling party pant ruling party and there's no way that uh, mungandu who comes from uh, a certain uh, tumbuka belt and the uh, uh, Honorable Chavinga also who comes from a certain belt of my finger belt which is also almost similar with where Mungandu comes from. You uh, disadvantage them so heavily uh, because they come from a certain area. Uh, you create a cartel to try and disadvantage them to get the much needed uh, development to their people delivered on time. Uh, so we as political spectators and political players we will give a proper, concise, and mature comment at the right time as we are also monitoring more things as they are unfolding. Then coming to the material lawmaker, he's a man who has stood up and said, no, even me, I can be president. Uh, what is wrong in that? Yeah, so if uh, uh, Trevor Mwinde stands up and says, oh no, uh, when there's space and room that you know, we have been defeated, uh, even me, I can uh, lead this team, I can lead that group. Of course, uh, I cannot just say I can be a chair lady. Mm -hmm. Okay, it goes against the ethics of uh, gender. Then, yes, yeah, so whatever people are talking about, Mao Sampa, he can have his own personal weaknesses. He cannot like the UPND, he cannot support the UPND. But I do believe that in a club, in an organized system, people must be allowed. Uh, to showcase their ability to deliver and defend what they stand for. So the Patriotic Front needs, through Given Lubinda, who is their acting president, they have even suspended their party chairman. I don't know. I don't know how they operate. Not youth chairman, party chairman. Party chairman, the political party, uh, who is like a de facto president. You suspend him for saying no. Your data where the report. Look, I don't know how they are operating anyway. So it's very unfortunate, and it's not a matter to joke about. Uh, it has got potential to tear apart their political party. And if at all they respect themselves and love themselves as they claim, they should show cause as to uh, making sure that they correct this situation uh, with care, because it is also likely. If they push the agenda forward, it can lead into by-elections and we will beat them harder uh, by uh, gaining popularity and gaining ground as a ruling party because they would have created enemies for themselves. And so people cannot uh, be taken for a joke or a right. You go up to that far, you come back, one step forward, one step backwards. People are interested to in making sure that their CDF is increased so don't want to divert money into very expensive uh, ventures like uh, members of parliament, uh, parliamentary by-elections. As we come to the close of this interview, um, what are your concluding remarks? Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge that uh, men and women contributed vehemently uh, to the uh, state that which we are celebrating in today. The 59 years of independence began as one year, it began as a day, went into a month, went into, it, it began as a, a minute of decision making where people decided that we have gained independence. It went to an hour, it went to a day, it went to a week, it went to a 
ma uh, month it went to a year it went into a decade into a generation we have passed half a century and uh, we are now at 59 years of Zambia's independence I want to acknowledge the hard working spirit and the unit of purpose of all the people that put in their best in making sure that our country can reach this far. All in all, I also want to urge Zambian politicians and political spectators and those that claim that they have got a part to play in the leadership of this country to be humble and be willing to deliver and uh, not only be willing to deliver but also listen to the expectations of the majority Zambians as the country is older than most of us. And one day, sooner or later, we may also leave it. We must leave a greater piece of record as the case is with our departed beloved elder men, Amusa Mwanamwamba and Nando Peter Magande. The records are there to be seen, impeccable records. So I want to encourage Zambian youths to take seriously and decide to keep away and refrain from corrosive uh, politics that which can actually uh, disturb their uh, bright future and their ability to develop and transform into good leaders. We have leadership distributed not only in one family, not only in one name. After a man has saved a country, there is need and reason to give space to many others also dedicate and showcase their ability of how best this country can be saved. Mm -hmm. I thank you for according me this time on this very special day to speak to masses and many other Zambians within the country and beyond. May God bless you bless the studio and bless all our supporters and bless all the citizens and i wish you a prosperous 2023 thank you very much mr mwinde for making an appearance on the lunchtime cafe we have been talking to mr trevor mwinde who is the upnd national deputy national uh, youth uh, chairperson and he was talking to us uh, in, in in relation to issues to do with independence and other uh, governance issues. We are coming back tomorrow again at the same time. Don't forget to join us, uh, but also remember to watch uh, the menus at 19.30 this evening on behalf of the entire production team. Have a blessed day.